coming to grips with being uh, a senior or being older. The difference was that now I was an old gay man and there are things that <laughs> I had to come to grips with at that, at, about that. It wasn't clearly that I was experiencing homophobia growing up. I, it, was, it was oppression as a woman, as a female. It's very, very extreme uh, gender roles. I'd been married three years, four years, and uh, I had a five-month-old son. What was I going to do? I keep cross-dressing in the closet, and why upset her? So uh, it's just going to be a dream, and I lived that way uh, until I was 60 years old. I would love to, one of these days, sit at a table and don't have to worry about being afraid to tell my story. A lot of the youth today don't know what we went through. Open House is the person at the other end of the phone when an LGBT senior calls for help. And our job is to make sure that welcoming, safe, and secure support is readily available to meet that need. Uh, when you think about aging, you think about you know kids taking care of their parents, and you think about a family structure that really uh, supports that person as they age and functions as their advocate. Well, many LGBT seniors don't have that kind of support system, and Open House is really working to create that sense of community, to create that support structure uh, so that LGBT seniors can age with dignity and grace um, in the city that they call home. Harvey Milk would have been 79 years old this year and I'd like to think that he would be a very strong advocate for LGBT seniors today and the people who led the way during that crucial time in the history of our civil rights movement are now today's seniors. That has been the most incredible um, part of my work here at Open House, really um, allowing the seniors to um, feel like it, what they have to say is important and valuable and that I really appreciate them for, you know, um, taking that first step and it's really, really brave of them to share their stories. And now coming to San Francisco, the Mecca, and finding that seniors are treated the way they're treated, I, I'm just appalled. So I find myself <coughs> Still fighting, and here I thought when I get older, I would just relax, but apparently that's not the case. I did not want to be this way. I didn't want to be a transsexual woman. I, did, I, I felt that I was born in the wrong body, but nobody ever gave me that education of how it was supposed to be. So I didn't want to be this way. I tried to commit suicide a couple of times. I went into the Navy and I thought the Navy would make me a man, and it didn't, damn it. <laughs> it, it met a lot, I met a lot of men, but it didn't make me a man. When I was very, very young, probably five or six years old, or somewhere around there, I remember we lived in, in a neighborhood in Seattle that there were lots of boys around. And I, re I remember um, sitting on the sidelines with another kid, probably younger than I was, actually, and I probably was physical with him. I probably put my arm around him or something, just in a... And his brother, who was older, saw this and came up and hit me. I remember running home, crying, wondering, what had I done that had provoked this outburst? And it was the, probably the first time in my life I realized that this was going to go on. This was going to be part of my life as an outsider. You know, it's very hard when you have really had to fight to become, to really own who you are. It also means that you've really had to be very independent. And it becomes a part of who you are, and it's very hard then to acknowledge that you need help. I lived up um, in Noe Valley, and the apartment I lived in for 17, 18 years was turned into tenants in common and I was evicted. That really put me at a loss. Financially, I thought I was 
if I husbanded my resources, I might make it to the end of my life if I don't live too long. At some point in my life, I'm going to need housing that is affordable. And you look around and you think you walked in and said, this is a great apartment. This is a great apartment. I can't afford it. I'm living here beyond my means. In addition to what Open House does in the housing arena, we're also building community and services. And so part of that is collaborating with existing um, senior service organizations to reach more LGBT seniors. Having somebody on your side, having somebody call Open House and say, I just, you know, I need these services in my house or I can't stay here. How can you help me? And they have the resources to do it and uh, are wonderful. Sometimes I sit here in this apartment and wish there was somebody I could go knock on the door and say, hi, how about a cup of coffee? Um, I was living in an apartment over on Clipper Street. Polly needed a place to live, and so she started investigating senior housing, and she found this whole complex. My place, my landlord was dying, and I had to move, and I, I had thought I would move here, and it just miraculously opened up just as I needed it, so I moved in. And the, the whole waiting list opened up, so several other people moved in, lesbians. After Sandy Shepard moved in, she actually bought a bunch of rainbows during Gay Pride and put them all over the place. Within half an hour, they were all gone. No rainbows. No rainbows. We did not want to think of it as a hate crime. We wanted to think, oh, these old people just like rainbows. <laughs> the next year, it happened again. Um, this time, Sandy called us together, and we fought it. We fought it. I mean, pointing out that every other holiday, there's the bunnies and the pumpkins and the this and the that and no rainbows, and this is not okay. This year, last, this last, last June, we had rainbows all over the place, and we won. Many of those providers think that they're not serving LGBT seniors right now, and in fact, they are. Uh, I joined uh, Open House about four or five years ago, and we go to different, or different centers and tell and, and, and let people know how we want to be treated when we're seniors, the volunteers, the staff, and even the people that come there. We often hear too from uh, providers who say, oh well, we don't, that's not really an issue for us because we don't really talk about it. And in fact, by not talking about it, they're sending a very strong and loud message to the LGBT clients that they have uh, that it's not an issue that is really um, welcome. I am amazed at how many of them have never had any LGBTs and they're not familiar with it at all. I saw, thought in this day and age and in this area, everybody did. I'm one of the T's in LGBT, and that stands for transgendered and covers a large umbrella of people, people who are, uh, like to dress up and appear as a, a gender that they are not, were not born, others who like to live that way all the time, and some who are interested in changing their body to the anatomy of the other gender and they, I have always used the term transsexual and that's what I am, I am a transsexual woman. Anyone can get involved with Open House as a volunteer. We are always looking for um, seniors to speak on our senior um, panels. So building community is really important in that connecting LGBT seniors with each other and intergenerational folks too with younger LGBT people and stay connected to the pulse of what brought them here to the city to begin with. In the Gay Pride Parade, I've walked with a senior contingent, but the younger people seem to understand. That the freedoms that they're enjoying
or paid for. And we paid a price. We're handing them a different world. And every one of those seniors in the parade has a story, some of them far more difficult than mine. I guess this is a legacy that seniors today leave for the youngsters. youngsters. Everybody's a youngster anymore. Everybody's a kid. I think it's really important as LGBT community members for us to keep in touch in, uh, with our history and then also honor the voices and the experiences of those that came before us. Yesterday's heroes, if you will. My mother was 90 years old and I came out to her and uh, uh, she didn't understand. She says, what do you want to be, an old lady like me? And I said, no, I'd rather be a 22 year old girl, but I have to settle for what I can do. <laughs> my mind is a 20 year old, but my body's a senior. And the only way I got to know to be a senior and got the reality check is when I went to Denny's and they told me, Seniors get 55, and 55 are over. And then I got the senior menu. Then I, <laughs> then I realized that I was a senior. It's such a gift to my life to be able to really think about my life and uh, understand myself in new ways and learn new things. And it's, it's, it's incredible and I'm just having a wonderful time. <laughs>